Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another socially distanced designer's desk episode. Uh, today we're taking a look at the staple, or one of the staples of the German Luftwaffe, and that is the FW190A8. So I'll be hosting from over here, then we'll hear from Landon about the minifig from over there, and we'll turn it over to Cody now uh, with the design from over there. Well, here we go. So this is the FW190A8. Uh, again, I've made a similar model in the past. I think that was also 2017 uh, when I made that one. So that was the F8 model. This is the A8 model. The F8 model was based off of the A8 model. Uh, in terms of me designing, it's quite a bit different. I'd started from complete scratch um, on designing this plane. Um, but this was one of the most popular aircraft uh, in the German arsenal over almost the entire war. It, it was introduced in 1941, and the A8 was the most popular variant of that plane. And they flew it uh, for a, at least a, a year. I think it came on the scene in 1944, the A8 model. Of course, there were different variants prior to that. Mm -hmm. uh, fighter bomber, very effective, very fast, about 405 miles an hour. Wow. Which made it comparable, if not surpassing, uh, most Allied aircraft at the time especially when most aircraft were about 380 miles an hour. So um, could cruise past a P-40 pretty, pretty yes, easily? Yes, certainly a P-40. Yes. P-40 was not very fast, but it was a tough plane. Um, this was faster, and it was a tough plane. And it packed a pretty good punch. It has four 20-millimeter cannons in the wings and two 13-millimeter cannons just peeking out above the nose. That would shoot through the propeller of the aircraft. And it could carry uh, quite a wide range of bombs. And rockets, I suppose, too. <laughs> I think on my original model, I included bombs on the wings and directly under the fuselage. And I was considering, this time, putting a drop tank underneath the fuselage. It was pretty iconic. Um, they would have to fly great distances in order to combat Allied air power uh, and their heavy bombers flying long ranges and trying to stop them from destroying resources that they needed. But in designing this, uh, the way I was able to achieve an accurate wing angle, uh, leading edge there, it's, I don't know if a lot of people noticed it in seeing other um, promotional images that we had, just in the angles of it, but looking at top down, you can definitely see that I um, built a sweeping wing, a uh, very minor sweeping wing. And it's using very that subtle. technique, I was able to have an axle hole sticking out of the bottom that would leave me with the ability to put a stand here. And right. not just any stand. Not just any stand, it's, it's a posable stand. So you can have it going other directions as well. Being a bit more forward if you wanted to have it sort of diving, sweeping off to the side. Yeah, the banking is really cool looking. <laughs> and it also made it really simple too, just a single axle sticking up, nothing major. It's such a small airplane um, that a single axle holds it up quite well. In terms of that color scheme, I guess would be based more off of February 1945, I think. Okay. Or, no, not 1945, 1944. Uh, they would have probably retained that color scheme going into 1945, and I know we're kind of trying to keep things 1945 this year, just mm -hmm. based on the anniversaries, 75 year anniversary. Well, this would have flown in 45, it just maybe didn't right. first appear on the scene in 45, sure. Well, exactly, but I'm talking more in terms of the color scheme that right. I went with, because there were a lot of color schemes. The last one that I built, um, the F8 model, had some dark green, some yellow on the nose, other things like that. Uh, this one just really popped out at me, the all black nose, and the exhaust would come out right here, which would usually end up making that portion of the aircraft black. So they would just paint black right next to it and have a cool jagged edge going back on there, which I had Landon create the artwork for that. Um, I thought that just really incorporated, really tied it in a lot better than the previous model that I made, as well as some printed um, dark bluish gray splotches going back. And that's really all the printed stuff on this airplane. The rest of it is stickered. Uh, including the spiral on the nose, which anyone who bought the original model knows that the nose cone doesn't spin <laughs> with the propeller, which it should, but this time it does. There we go. <laughs> so you can have that mesmerizing spiral, and this time it's yellow. Uh, originally it was white spiral painted on the nose. So this would go well with the um, 
BF109 G model that we came out with a couple years ago, which also had the spiral on the nose. Um, you can even see some, some of the similarities into the side. Yeah. Color schemes. Certainly. And same canopy as I've been using for a long time. <laughs> Landon made the sticker artwork for this canopy as well as the ME262. Um, not really changing it up a whole lot in terms of the cut lines. It's German and it just kind of retains that shape that they have for their canopies. Uh, there is somewhat of a detailed cockpit. As much as I usually can, there's a joystick and a Lego printed um, panel in the front. So I think, uh, I think that about sums up the model. <laughs> very, very cool. So the, the new uh, but different version and pretty much completely redesigned FW190A8. Now let's turn it over to Landon and hear a little more about the figure that comes with this kit. Okay, let's get things started. First off, this is a, obviously a late war German pilot to go with uh, Cody's awesome kit. Um, we've, you've seen this, some of this artwork before, um, so it's, it's kind of a nice revisit to this. I think it's working uh, pretty well, so um, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Starting off with the top, um, we have a, um, we're opting to kind of simulate that um, pilot's uh, helmet um, with that Lego head. Um, so starting off with like a black base uh, we're actually printing the uh, skin right onto the minifigure. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, and then right onto the, to that black Lego right. head. Uh, then we have um, some later war goggles. A uh, little bit kind of like a, like a, they almost look sort of bug-eyed. Um, and they're, they're smaller than most other goggles that you'd see um, other countries using. So just an interesting note there uh, with some simulated kind of horizon lines and that reflection on the goggle goggles. Uh, oxygen mask, and then on his uh, torso we have the uh, Iron Cross there, so it's, uh, it's the award that he is proudly displaying on, uh, around his neck. Uh, leather jacket, uh, insignia, uh, on the belt there you have a um, pistol, a pistol holster, and then a really, uh, it's a B-UHR, B-UR, B-UR um, watch, and those were pilot watches of the era. And for watch collectors, um, that's kind of a, a really sought after um, pieces from the era because they are massive. It's like 55 millimeters across, which is, Holy which is like double the size. Holy smokes. Of, yeah, it's huge. It's a huge watch. I mean, it's, it's a so you can, forearm band. Right. <laughs> and they would actually wear it over their, um, over their leather jackets pretty commonly. Um, so that's why it was so oversized. Just like at a glance, you can see what time it is. Right. But they're using it to coordinate attacks and, and it just a whole, a whole um, different um, uses for that. Uh, moving down, um, pants and these boots here. Uh, later in the war they had actually electrically heated leather boots. So you can see little tabs where they'd plug into um, right in the, right in the uh, airplane there and to keep their feet warm because I'd imagine it gets pretty cold. So that's the minifigure with a kit. So that does it for this episode of the Designer's Desk. It's the FW190A8. Uh, make sure to let us know what you think of this kit in the comments. Otherwise, tune in next time and thanks for watching.